but for lack of understanding what? What is it that is not understood on our side? You know. I don't think we understand that communism isn't the kind of militant communism that it was like when it first started out. You know, it used to be like international conferences, you know, kill America conferences. Like maybe they still hold them. But they're all kind of waiting now. Like Russia, this is the country, you know, it, it's building itself up. It's going more towards well, now, the Western capitalism than we are in this country. Really if you capitalism. consider, if you consider the sort of development of communism in Russia, or in the thought of Karl Marx, um, Marxist socialism, you have. It wouldn't make any sense at all without understanding the development of. English industrialism in the 18th and 19th centuries. Without understanding what was going on industrially, the sudden reaction against it would be nothing. Why do you think Karl Marx was able to develop such rage against capitalism, imperialism? What, what went on in his bosom? How was it possible? You couldn't understand that without quite a lot of historical background because he didn't understand it very well himself. He didn't care. As long as he was good and mad, he was happy. It was a way of life. But the um, things are changing so fast now that, that we switch out of the old mechanical industrialism into the new electric technology that the uh, technical revolution that is going on in our own world is far bigger than anything that was going on in Marx's day. So Marxism and communism are peanuts compared to electric technology. And to be fighting against Marxism or communism in the electric age is to be like Don Quixote tilting at windmills. You're just mistaking the enemy altogether uh, we have mistaken where the force is. It's here. It's not out there at all. The force that is communizing the world is in General Electric and in the Bell Telephone Labs. It is not in Asia or in Russia. What is the purpose of war in, psychologically? Beyond helping the country or the individual to have a strong image of who he is. War as a quest for identity is a very important and neglected theme. Violence as quest for identity could take place whenever people feel their identity is threatened. The moment people feel they're losing their identity, they could get very angry and very aggressive and very militant, just in the hope of retaining an identity. This may be the history of war. It may be possible to diagnose not only when war did occur, but when it will occur by this simple posture. Now, in our world, our identity is being challenged by the hour, by the new technology. The relation of man to man and of country to country is being changed today at tremendous speed. It's very comforting to have an enemy like communism that you could point at and say they are to blame for our loss of identity. Without wanting to or thinking about it, we are turning to communism very rapidly in this country. In any part of the electric or 20th century world, Communism is simply a function of service industries and service information. <laughs> now, the communism, the imperialism of the 19th century was the market. The things that drove people to, into other people's territory was the need to conquer new markets for products. That isn't true now. In an age of universal information and service industries and knowledge industries, the need to conquer other territories in order to sell them Ford cars or any kind of product is gone. The great feuds occurred over loss of face. 
Somebody's honor had been smirched. <coughs> they had lost face. Now, that's what's happening to us in communism. We so, feel we're losing our image. So we're fighting for our whole Western way of life. We're not fighting for... Not fighting for territory or power. But again, the pre preserving is of an image, not of territory. <coughs> But the destruction is from within. It's an implosion, not an explosion from without. The dangers to us are not from outside. They're from inside. And we don't know how to fight that. We've never had to do this before. It's like uh, some member of your own family dragging down the family name into the mud. How do you fight your own family? Well, there is the quite uh, miserable aspect of war that it serves economic needs on, in many ways. It brought us out of the Big Depression. And uh, at present, uh, war serves a huge uh, economic investment and uh, prosperity and control of productive levels in various parts of the economy possible to program the whole economy as long as there's a war on because the needs of the war is so great that they keep the whole economy simply humming. Now that is the most sickening and desperate side of war, but it's true of all wars. They, uh, they all serve affluence. On the part of a masculine aggressive society, all war helps wealth and production and motivation. Everybody's got a motive, a drive on <clears throat> At the present time, you can see the great lack of this and the confusion resulting. 